It's a Thursday. That means it is mailbag time here on Locked On Cougars. Answering your questions, you guys program the show ahead. And we'll also talk about the fifth commitment in the 2023 recruiting class, a three-star athlete out of Lakes High School in the greater Northwest, Leo Pulalassi. Who is he? You'll get to know him ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And a huge thank you once again for joining us here on Locked On Cougars and making it your first listen of the day. We always appreciate you guys checking out the show. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. The goal here, simply stated, is to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room. And the way to do that, well, let's answer your questions. That's an easy way to do it. Easy way to program a show here on a Thursday. I opened up the mailbag. I threw it out on social media and you guys responded in mass. Maybe one of our most packed mailbags that I have ever seen, at least in recent memory. So let's dive right in and start off with this one. Tyson Goodrich, a Tyson Goodrich one says, Jake, is it football season yet? Tyson, it is not. We are 79 days away from today. If you notice my hat, I'm wearing a Nike golf hat. I am, as of recording of this podcast, uh, most of you will probably be watching this while I am out on the golf course. I'm going to be taking part in the Utah Social Open today. So if you happen to be out there attending that golf tournament, come over and say, I'd love nothing more than to talk to you guys and catch up with some of the better uh, people out there. Uh, this is the fun part about the Utah Social Open. There's like uh, 200 people out there, Utah fans, Utah State fans, Cougar fans. It's a blast. So looking forward to that. But it is not college football season yet. The good news is we are inside of 80 days. We are 79 days away from today. So happy Ben Ward Day. Ben Ward is a walk-on offensive lineman for BYU. Uh, served a mission, then joined the program, I believe, a year ago. He wears the number 79 on BYU's roster currently. So he is the guy we're celebrating today. But Tyson it is not quite here yet. And there's a related question to that coming in from our good friend, Big Uncle Pooh. Adrian himself says, how can we make the season get here faster? And then Damon Carter at Carter 5231 uh, responds, in addition to Pooh's season, once the season is here how can we make it not go by so fast gentlemen if i had the answers and the ability to make those two things happen pretty sure i would be like supreme leader of the free world that, that's the thing about this Th those are two very valid questions i did response uh, respond to uncle Pooh on twitter saying hey we could have some tailgates you know between now and then to uh, kill some of the time off but we're just 79 days away so i am very much looking forward to having college football season back here i know every one of you out there wants football season here byu and usf the good news is as of saturday there are 77 days that's 11 weeks there are fewer weeks remaining than the entire there, there'll be a longer football season than the weeks remaining leading up to the football season. Hopefully that makes sense. It's 12 week regular season, 13 weeks with the bye week for BYU. There's only 11 weeks in a couple of days until football season returns. So just think about it that way. We're actually on the downhill slide towards football season. That's the exciting part about this. Some other questions coming in here. Regarding BYU football, uh, one from our good friend uh, Blair Red, Coach Blair Red on Twitter says, "How is Kevin Clune fitting into his role?" We've had Coach Clune on this podcast a couple of times uh, since he joined the BYU staff as the linebackers coach. And my overall takeaway on what Coach Clune has done is essentially he's kind of gotten out of the way. And I know that sounds weird, but the biggest thing for a guy like Kevin Clune is he's got a lot of talented linebackers. He's got Peyton Wilgar and Keenan Peely. Losing those guys a year ago absolutely killed BYU's defense. We have hit this uh, over and over again, but he's got a lot of talent at that linebacker room. And the biggest thing for him is he put them in positions to have success. That obviously all has to do also with defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki and how he schemes things for these linebackers. But I think the more important thing is that Coach Kloon, he's doing a really good job. He's kind of keeping his head down and doing his thing. This is a guy, as many of you might recall, has been a defensive coordinator at multiple stops, has had pretty good success as a coordinator, and it not, can be hard at times to have been a defensive coordinator and then obviously get a new job and be a position coach under a, a new regime and try and fit in. But the biggest thing about Kevin Kloon is 
He enjoys being at BYU. He is very, very close with Kalani Satake, Aaron Roderick, Elisa Tuiaki, a lot of the coaches on BYU staff who are advocates for bringing him to Provo. He gets along with them very, very well, and he's just kind of kept his head down and gone about doing his work. He does a great job recruiting, does a lot of work in California and in kind of the West Coast area for BYU on the recruiting front. But the biggest thing is he has the ability to go out and chase talent all over the country. He spent time at Memphis. He's been in the American Athletic Conference. He has been at Hawaii. He's been at Utah State. He's a well-traveled coach, so he's got connections a lot of different places, and that's what BYU is utilizing here. We've talked about recruiting here. It's kind of an aside, not necessarily answering the question, but BYU's recruiting reach is going to places it's never really gone before. They're, they're going to Florida. They're going to Texas more in mass. They're pushing towards the East Coast. That, that's the fun part about this. And we're going to talk a little bit later on about Leah Pulalassi, the new uh, commit for BYU out of the Pacific Northwest region. But I think BYU's recruiting, they understand, you know what, we've got to broaden our reach and try and find new guys in different places. And I think Kevin Kloon's doing a good job kind of being part of that. Just essentially just keeping his head down, doing the work, and that's the fun part about that. And a related question that connects with that is from our good friend White Crisco uh, saying that I haven't heard much about uh, Hoke, Wilson, or Daly speaking of uh, some of the linebackers that are some of the reserves for BYU, the linebacker position. Any word on how they played in spring and if they have improved since last year? I like the starters at linebacker, but worry if there's injuries like last year. Well, White Crisco, you're not wrong. The injury concern is absolutely valid. I've heard very good things about Josh Wilson, of course, the younger brother of Zach Wilson. I heard he is developing nicely. The biggest thing for him is to go out there and prove that he can be an option at linebacker. He's a little bit undersized, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in this day and age of college football. The, the undersized part of it's not the worst thing. The, the fact of the matter is you've got to be able to process information and just make plays. And I think as he goes on in his career, I think you're going to see a guy like Josh Wilson continue to improve in that category. His younger brother, Micah, will be joining the BYU football program this fall as well, who will also be a linebacker. So you could have some nice uh, pieces with the Wilson family on the defensive side of the football for BYU to keep an eye on. Michael Daly is a guy that I'm very excited to see in BYU's uh, uniforms. Is The biggest thing with Michael Daly is he is the former SAC leader in the state of Utah. Utah before his mission. He is obviously uh, back from a mission, spent essentially a year getting himself back in shape. And what I heard about him during spring ball is that he is expected to push for playing time beginning in fall camp. We'll see how that all shakes out. It's similar to uh, with Cade Hoke as well. The other guy you asked about here, White Crisco, is uh, they need to go out there and just make plays. That's the biggest thing about this. If you want to move up in on the depth chart where BYU's linebacking core, there's a glut of bodies at those positions. And BYU's morphing more and more to playing maybe just two linebackers with that hybrid uh, flash role, which a guy like Chaz Ayu feels. Well, if guys want to get on the field, and that includes guys like Jackson Kafusi, Ben Bywater, some of the reserve guys behind the leaders in Keenan and Peely and Peyton Wilgar, in practice, you've just got to be a playmaker. You have to go make plays, make tackles behind the line of scrimmage, pick off passes, break up passes, uh, force fumbles, recover fumbles. Do all the little things that make you stand out from the rest of the guys in camp. That is going to be the biggest thing for these young bucks is to go out and show what they can do uh, for BYU this fall. And obviously that's much easier said than done. I I, I can sit here. I'm an, I'm an armchair analyst. What, what's my job? I, PK, who I work with on a day, daily basis at the zone sports network says we are second guessers. That is what we are as uh, sports pundits. Uh, I work in sports radio. I do a podcast here. I am analyzing things from my armchair. Obviously I am not on the field making these plays, but if these guys do want to move up on the depth chart and become more of an option for more playing time in their career, well, the best thing you can do is go out there and make plays. I, I think that would be key number one if you want to have success on the football field. We'll get to some more of these questions. There's some more football questions, some basketball questions, even some Big 12 questions. We'll get to all of those here in just a moment. But I do need to take a minute and talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Built Bar are the best tasting protein bars I have ever had. I am a broken record on saying that. I think many of you who listen to this podcast daily are like, Jake, you're driving me nuts. You talk about this all the time. But my friends, they have dropped a brand new flavor, and boy, is it incredible. It's called Mud Pie. Any of you who have had a mud pie in your life know how delicious it is. If you're a chocolate lover, Mud Pie is just an absolute delight. And 
Soap Bar delivered it in two different forms, this mud pie flavor. They have it in the built a puff form and the regular built bar form. I have had a chance to try both versions of it. I'm not going to lie. The built puff version is actually incredible. I'm not saying that the built bar version of it's not bad, but I really enjoyed the puff version. The best part is these taste like mud pie, legitimately just in a bar form. It's covered in 100% chocolate. The best part is it is covered and with a cookies and cream crumble. It is absolutely incredible. The best part is it tastes like a treat, but the macros on it are absolutely incredible. 16 grams of protein, just 150 calories and only eight grams of sugar. It's an absolutely incredible bar. The macros on it are nuts. Give it a shot. They are available now at built.com, but they are going fast because they are available for just a limited time. So if you want to give this a shot, you got to get to built.com and place your order right away. I want you guys to give them a shot because man, I'm going to be ordering two or three boxes myself. <laughs> They're that good. I, you guys know that I talk all the time about built bar. So give them a shot, go to built.com right now. Use the promo code locked 15 while you're there. That's L O C K E D one five for 15% off your order. The best part is if mud pie, maybe chocolate, isn't your, your cup of tea. They have a million other flavors. It feels like that you can give a shot as well. So that's the best part about it. Get to built.com. Once again, use that promo code lock 15, get enjoying the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at built bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. We have a very important favor to ask all of you. We have put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts just like this one. Uh, if you guys want to go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It doesn't take very long and everyone that completes the survey qualifies for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take that audience survey, go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey and fill it out. Thank you in advance for your help on that front. All right, back to your guys' questions here. I got a great one coming in here asking the question. This comes from Blake Goodfellow at Blake Goodfellow one saying, what is your guess on this year's new home jersey that BYU Equipment keeps teasing? Is it the Sailor Coog, the Beat Digger Coog, some Royal or Navy mashup, Return of the Bib? What would you like to see? Blake, the Bib can just stay where it's at. The, the Bib uh, was outlawed by the NCAA. I cannot believe that Nike thought that that was going to be a revolutionary concept, but Let's be real. Phil Knight and Nike have always been one to kind of push the push the um, what am I saying? The, pu push the uh, the envelope. There we go. Push the envelope. And I think the fun part is is that BYU will continue to work with Nike in good faith, but at the same time, they're gonna get a compromise with regards to being like this space age type squad. They're not gonna be the next organ. That's just not BYU's DNA, especially under Kalani Satake. Kalani is all about traditional format and that oval Y look that BYU has honed over the years. It's a great look. They added the Royal and Navy helmets this past year. I hope that the Sailor Coog is coming. That is the one I hope for. So to, to kind of spoil the surprise there, that's what I want to see. I want to see the Sailor Coog, whether it's on a uniform, uh, hopefully on the helmet. That's where I want to see it most. I know that there was some thought last year that Baylor with their Sailor Bear and BYU with Sailor Coog should be the matchup. That's going to be the matchup on the home opener on September 10th. Why not pull it out then? I think it'd be absolutely phenomenal if you can pull it off. But I think that if, you, if you're going to have Royal and Navy as your two blues, and we've heard that from BYU equipment, uh, DFO, Billy Nixon has said that BYU's legacy and their history uh, includes both shades of blue, and they will continue to be that, you don't put them together. If you put a Royal and Navy mashup together on the football field, I, uh, uh, I guess I can't knock it until I actually see it. Because, uh, for example, I, I'm wearing a Utah Jazz uh, City Edition uh, t-shirt uh recording this podcast i think lift this up here you can see that right there the the red rock edition is what they call it when they first announced those uniforms for the utah jazz they had kind of the color gradient that went from uh yellow to red to brown uh to represent southern utah i thought they were going to be absolutely horrendous and when they finally got on the court they were absolute, absolute money i'm a huge fan of them i just cannot see a scenario where having royal and navy together in the same uniform combo is going to look good so Let's not mash that up. Let's just keep them separate. Uh, switch off games. The nice part is there are multiple options for BYU uniform-wise. Let's just keep that going. That, that's the fun part about this. All right, other questions here uh, coming in include uh, this one. This one's a little bit facetious. It comes from Ether1314 at 14 Ether. Uh, apparently, somebody really likes the Book of Ether in the Book of Mormon. It says this. How will BYU do once Deseret and Zion are established? Will they never lose or just once in a while to keep them humble? Well, Ether... Um, 
I don't know how to answer that question, honestly. I, I think the biggest thing is, is once Deseret and Zion are established, I just hope that sports are part of it. Uh, it makes my world go round. Sports are a big part of my life. I work in sports radio. It's where I draw my paycheck from. Uh, I hope in the future, you know what, I, ho I hope that we are able to watch, play, and just participate in sports. So hopefully uh, BYU will win, but I just hope that we have actually have the option of playing those. I don't think we have, I'm not trying to uh, be like this scriptorian who's like, well, sports are not going to be part of it or sports will be. I just hope in the hereafter that sports are part of it. All right. A couple other questions coming in. Let's get to one on the big 12. Here's comes from B McGarry at McGarry 15 it says any guesses on who the new big 12 commissioner will be and how much money do you think the big 12 will make per team? I think the biggest thing with the Big 12 commissioners, we saw a report, I believe it might have come from Dennis Dodd, uh, saying that sources said that there is not going to be an in-house candidate who is going to succeed Bob Bowlesby at Big as Big 12 commissioner. That means, that means somebody coming from the outside. I have been a big proponent of getting Oliver Luck, if you can get him, but he did work with the Big 12 a year ago, so is he necessarily the in-house guy that doesn't uh, count? I don't know, but I think that that's the guy I would tab, but I think the biggest thing, I think the other report said that they're trying to determine, speaking of the Big 12, in terms of kind of going with like a new age commissioner, similar to the Pac-12 with George Klyovkov, who didn't come from an athletics background, came from the entertainment realm uh, versus more of a traditional uh, hire where they come from the athletic uh, world, uh, the college athletics world and seeing if they might be the right option. Uh, I don't know that necessarily there's a right answer either way. The nice part is I think the Big 12 will find a good commissioner. The biggest thing is they've got to be a good negotiator because the money that the Big 12 will make per team, well, we're seeing that, that they're uh, somewhere around the $40 million range right now for the Big 12. I've got to believe that they will be pushing to increase that number even with the new teams coming in. So I am of the opinion that if the SEC and the Big Ten are going to reportedly make $100 plus million plus per school with their new media rights deal, if you're the Big 12, you're saying we need at least $50 million. And if you have $50 million, you're actually doing pretty well. I know that it's uh, half as much as those Big Two, speaking of the Big Ten as well as the SEC. But if you can be in the same realm, if not outclass both the ACC and the Pac-12, in which currently you're already doing, I think you're sitting pretty. That's actually a very good spot for BYU and the rest of the new Big 12 to be in at that point. All right, uh, final few questions here. Uh, regard the basketball programs at BYU. Let's start off with uh, Wayne Fag at Cusco uh, Boy saying that who are the possible candidates for the third assistant for BYU women's basketball? I don't know who the possible candidates are, Wayne. I haven't really dug into this. The one person I would tab if I am uh, the coach, uh, if I'm uh, – uh, uh, Man, I am struggling with names and facts tonight. But regardless, uh, the biggest thing is I think if I were to if I were Amber Whiting, that's who I was trying to think of, and I was hiring a third assistant, I'd go get Kehlani Unga from UVU. She is the wife of BYU running back coach Harvey Unga. She's in a really good job. He's a former uh, BYU athlete in her own right, playing for the BYU women's basketball program. I think it would be phenomenal to have her back in the BYU fold, but. We'll see who Coach Whiting opts for. That'd be my pick if it were me. Our good friend Wild Turkey Fart Blunt at VWAG23, a GFOP, says, do you anticipate an announcement from Kim Aiken this week? I've been anticipating an announcement from Kim Aiken Jr. any day now. Uh, what I have heard is that he is trying to get into grad school. I don't necessarily know which of the grad programs at BYU he's trying to get into, but once he is accepted, I would expect that he picks BYU because he's not picked anybody else at this point. There's still uh, that chance that he could commit somewhere else, but I have heard very positive things about him eventually becoming a member of the BYU basketball program. I think he is the prototype three and D guy that BYU needs on the wing for this BYU basketball men's roster. And hopefully it all works out. All right. Other questions coming in here on the basketball front, Linda Murray at Linda Murray on Twitter says any good prospects for a center this year for basketball. I haven't heard much lately. Well, Linda, I haven't heard much either. We talked to Noah Waterman earlier this week. He is more of a stretch four, a 6'11", sharpshooter who can go out to the three-point line, shot 40% from three. He's not necessarily a center. I do know this. BYU is very keen on Atiki Ali Atiki taking the next, next step and becoming kind of that future center that BYU can build around in the Big 12. Fus Traore and AAA, as I call him, Atiki Ali Atiki, I think are the future tandem that BYU hopes are their lead two guys in the front court. I still think that Atiki is probably a year away from really being that guy for BYU, though. So if they can find a big man out there on the transfer portal market, get him. Uh, at this point, you're probably looking at more slim pickings than before, but 
I have not heard of many names and I apologize. I don't have much more than that, but I do think they need to find another big man who can back up a triple a and allow Foos Triori to play that four spot. I, I he's capable of playing the five. We all know that he's got that seven foot wingspan. He's got the freakish uh, jumping ability that I think would fit well if BYU needed to play small and have him at the five, but that's an option you want to have versus needing to play. If that makes sense, you want to have the option versus it being a necessity for the BYU basketball program. All right, final a few questions here uh, coming on. Uh, Jeremiah Hell here. I believe this is the last one I've got on today's show, and that is uh, what is Pope, speaking of Mark Pope's recruiting strategy, going into the Big 12? Is he working off established connections when he reached out to these four- and five-star athletes, or is he cold calling to build new relationships? And Jeremiah actually quote tweeted, uh, tweeted a, a tweet of his own saying that BYU football may not be chasing stars, but Mark Pope appears to be. He says in the last 24 hours, this came from on uh, Wednesday night, there were, I believe, six five-star athletes that BYU has reportedly reached out to in the last 24 hours, in addition to multiple four-star athletes. I think the biggest thing, Jeremiah, is Mark Pope is unafraid of chasing anybody and everybody. That has been one of the hallmarks of his tenure at BYU. He is shooting for the sun, the moon, and hopefully landing on the stars, to use that expression, and that's the fun part about this. He is going to just absolutely chase anybody and everybody. Does he have some of these relationships with connections to some of these guys, I would absolutely think that he does because the coaching community, AAU, that type of stuff, it exists out there and it allows coaches like uh, Mark Pope to get connected to young men that he can go after. I also don't think that it's out of the realm of possibilities. He simply is reaching out to these guys, cold calling them, saying, Hi, my name's Mark Pope, or he has one of his assistants, whether it's Cody Feger, uh, it could be a guy like Nick Robinson saying, Hi, I'm Coach Robinson from BYU. Do you have interest in learning more about our program? I honestly think there is some element to that of being a cold call type salesman with regards to college basketball recruiting. I don't necessarily think it's maybe the most effective route to go, but Mark Pope, this is a dude. He wants the biggest, best, and just overall most talented roster he can put together, and he's going to do his absolute best to put it together. That's the fun part about this is the BYU is just chasing all kinds of talent. Do they land any of these four- and five-star talents? I, I would say that maybe you get one, maybe two of them. You're actually just sitting really pretty and you're feeling really good about yourself. And that seems like a stretch for BYU, just where they stand. But the nice part is you have a nice recruiting chip in your back pocket if you're BYU right now with that Big 12 membership. You can go out there and say you can play in the Big 12, which is the preeminent college basketball program. We need you here to lead us into the Big 12 and help us win that conference. A guy like Colin Chandler, who's going to go on a mission and then come back and play in the Big 12 for BYU, he's a four-star athlete. BYU believes that he can help lead them to success in the Big 12. This is going to be an absolute just dogfight, game after game for BYU basketball in the Big 12. You need as many horses, as many talented horses as you possibly can muster if you want to win at the highest level. So I actually applaud Mark Pope for doing what he's doing in terms of his recruiting strategy. So hopefully that answers your question, Jeremiah. I do think there's an element that he probably has some connections to these guys, but at the same time, there's probably some of them. He's just reaching out to cold call essentially and saying, hi, my name is Mark Pope. Can I tell you more about BYU? Uh, Why not? Why not do that? Uh, there was one other question here. Uh, B. McGarry also had another question. Any guesses who BYU gets to fill out their basketball roster? I think if they get Noah Waterman and Kim Aiken, uh, B. McGarry, I think they'd be sitting pretty on the roster. They'd have a really nice setup, I feel like, in that circumstance. But there's still a long way to go. You've got to obviously let things shake out, and you have to get the pen to paper, get the signatures, get these guys enrolled in school, and then move forward from there. All right. There you go. I think I got through every single question that came in. I think it was upwards of 12, maybe 14 questions. Thank you. Uh, truly thank you to all of you for reaching out. Always love hearing from you guys. If you want to send in questions, please do so anytime, whether it's via DM on Twitter at Locked On Cougars. You can send it via Facebook to Locked On Cougars, our Facebook page there, or on Instagram, Locked On Cougars. Really simple to find there. I'm at Jacob C. Hatch on Twitter. And as always, you can email the show. Locked on BYU at gmail.com is the email address. 
Always appreciate you guys reaching out. And by the way, we are looking uh, for football season. If you would like to sponsor the podcast, be a part of the podcast for the upcoming football season, get your product, your company, your services in front of thousands of BYU fans, both in video format, this is me on YouTube, or in traditional podcast format. We are uh, obviously looking to get some people locked in for the upcoming football season. Now is the time to get on that. Please email us, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. If you are interested in doing that, would love to have you guys on board and being a part of the Locked On Cougars community as an official sponsor. All right, as we round out today's edition of the show, let's talk about the newest commit to the BYU football program, Leo Pulalassi. Who do you, who is he? What do you need to know about him? All that and more as we continue on with Locked On Cougars. All right, as we go uh, on today's show, as we round things out, let's talk about who Leo Pulalassi is from Lakes High School in Lakewood, Washington in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I had a chance to watch Leo's film, and I came away very impressed with just the overall nature of him being an athlete for the BYU football program. That is the best thing I can say about this young man is he is just a true athlete in every sense of the word. He participates in track, basketball, and football all at Lakes High School. And you're probably wondering, okay, is he a bench warmer? What does he do? He actually uh, competes in four different events in track and field. He averaged double digit points in basketball for Lakes High School. And the best part is on the football field where he's going to play for BYU, he's contributed at four different positions. That's the fun part. He was the 3A Pierce County League Offensive Player of the Year this past year. He ran for 931 yards as a running back, which is kind of the position I think that BYU is projecting him to play initially, at least in a Cougar uniform. He had 13 touchdowns in 10 games played. He even played some quarterback for Lakes High School last year after their starter was lost to this for the season due to an ACL. He passed for 216 yards and kind of a modified hybrid role. Also had two touchdown passes. So I really like what Leo Pulalassi brings to BYU. I think this is kind of more of what BYU's uh, looking at in terms of their overall recruiting strategy. He is a true athlete in every sense of the word. The 24-7 uh, rankings have him as a mid-three-star athlete with an 86 rating. Uh, that's kind of middle tier of the three stars. The best part is, I like the fact that he plays multiple sports. Kwani Satake has said it once, he'll say it again, and he'll continue to reiterate it, is that he wants guys who play multiple sports. He likes true athletes. They will find the right spot for them, they feel like, on the football field. They just want guys who are well-rounded, who can come in and contribute in meaningful ways to the BYU football program. And that sure is what uh, Leo Pulalassi brings, I think, for BYU. His offer list isn't necessarily just crazy. He has Army that had offered him, Colorado State. There's some FCS schools, Montana, Montana. State, Portland State, uh, Nevada also had given him an offer at the FBS level, and Weber State from Utah also offered him. So not necessarily an incredible offer list, but I think there will be interest in him rising as time goes along here, speaking of Pula Lassie. I think that he's, he's a phenomenal addition to the BYU recruiting class. He is officially the fifth commitment in the 2023 recruiting class, joining quarterback writer Burton of Springville High School, Pokaiawa, uh, Honga from Timview High School, who is an athlete in his own right, similar to Pula Lassie. Stanley Ross, who is a defensive lineman from Sky Ridge High School here in Lehigh, Utah. And then the four-star athlete himself, Emmanuel Waller, defensive lineman from Oak Mountain High School in Alabama. You got a nice class coming together right now for BYU. Obviously, you're hoping to have some headliners like Walker Lyons, Jackson Bowers, Ethan Thomason, Hunter Clegg, all those guys we have talked about recently that were on official visits to BYU. You get those guys, and this class is maybe the best class in recent BYU memory, maybe rivaling that of the 2020, 2010 class that was top 25 rated nationally. It was obviously headlined by Jake Heaps, uh, who is now, by the way, the personal quarterback coach. For Russell Wilson of the Denver Broncos, congratulations to former BYU quarterback Jake Heaps on that front. But I think this recruiting class is off to a solid start for BYU in 2023. Gone are the days of BYU going into the signing period, and you've, you've known for six months who they're going to sign. They don't uh, collect 20 commitments during the summer. They're actually slow playing some of this, allowing guys to kind of go through the process. They're chasing more athletes, more talent when it comes to BYU. They have that big 12 recruiting chip in their back pocket and they're using that to great effect. Will it mean that you maybe are in some more recruiting battles and you maybe come up short a time or two that you would rather maybe have taken more of a quote unquote safe route by taking another athlete over here? Maybe that is what's going to play out. But the nice part is BYU is swinging for the home runs, the grand slams. That's the fun part. There's no longer, we're just going to hit singles here and play small ball. That's not what BYU is doing in recruiting right now. They're going for the home runs, the grand slams. And guess what? They may strike out a time or two, 
But when they do hit that grand slam, you're going to be feeling really good as a BYU fan. All right, that's where we will leave it for today's edition of the show. On tomorrow's edition of the podcast, we're talking Utah State football, getting a look at the Aggies. Ajay Salveson, a former co-worker of mine now working with the Aggie Sports Network, will join me to talk about Utah State, get you an inside look at what the Aggies bring as they come to Provo on a Thursday night for the final meeting, at least for the foreseeable future, between these two longtime rivals. We'll get to that on, on tomorrow's edition of the show. And a big thank you once again for making us your first listen here on Locked On Cougars. Now go make our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast your second listen. They do an incredible job. Josh Neighbors does of getting you up to speed on everything from the conference level when it comes to the Big 12. Get that free and available wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube just like this show. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for June 16th, 2022. Enjoy the Utah Open if you're out there, and we will talk to you guys again tomorrow. See ya.